guys, it's Katie from On The Block Realty. And today I am here with Sanj Mand. He is a broker with Cascade Mortgage Capital. And I wanted to invite him on here to just talk about mortgages, specifically variable rate mortgages, because I think there's a lot of questions right now about that subject. And I wanted to bring you some information from somebody that is a professional in the mortgage space. So thanks, Sanj, for coming on today. No problem at all. Thanks for having me, Katie. Maybe do you want to give us a little bit of background about who you are? Yeah, absolutely. So as mentioned, I'm Sanj. I'm a uh, partner and co-founder of Cascade Mortgage Capital. Um, We're a boutique mortgage brokerage here based out of the GTA. Um, We opened up shop in fall of 2021. Kind of uh, precarious timing just with the market changing and everything happening so quickly in the last few months here. But um, yeah, myself, I've been in the business for about five years now. exposure to the development industry and a lot of family exposure in this business as well. So kind of, it's been a lifelong journey to a degree and my partner, he's been in the business for, I want to say about 25 years. He was a former head of commercial for uh, Western Canada at CIBC and head of credit for a uh, 61st international bank, 61st largest international bank, sorry, um, operating in Canada. So we have, you know, quite a wide variety of experience and, uh, a very diverse background and personally I specialize in private lending more so than anything else, but we do have a full service shop that can do just about everything. Perfect. And Sanj is on Twitter if you want to follow him because he provides a lot of great insight on just what's going on in the market and um, just to, you, you provide a lot of great information. And, and I reached out yeah. to you originally because of just the stuff you were talking about with regards to variable rate mortgages. And we'll get into that in a, in a little bit. But from your perspective, like what are you seeing right now um, in the market the way it's been going the last couple of months? It's uh, It's been kind of touch and go in a lot of different ways, right? Um, you know, when we first started to see the prices come down, immediate concerns were deal cancellations, appraisal shortfalls, that kind of thing. And, you know, we did start to see that early on. Today, we're still kind of seeing some of the appraisal shortfalls and obviously deal cancellations where buyers kind of have that buyer remorse scenario where they feel like they paid too much. It has already, for a lot of the cases, played its way through the system, but we will continue to see that over the next few months um, to a lesser mm-hmm. degree, I, I expect. Um, yeah we are kind of starting to see prices stabilize a bit, but they are, you know, still trending down by and large. Um, Investors or speculators, depending on how you want to classify them that are (laughs) kind of rushing to the exits are the ones really forcing the bottom number here. So that's kind of something we'll continue to see play its way out over the next few months here, especially with continued rate heights, rate heights expected through the next couple of uh, bank of Canada announcements. Um, Day to day, In terms of files that I've been seeing lately, it's been kind of interesting. I have seen quite a bit of situations where borrowers are working with brokers that are very, very busy and schedule out on a closing date basis. Mm -hmm. That's kind of having its own diverse effect on the impact on the market right now as well from a borrower borrowing uh, capacity standpoint, right? So if you were at the edges on a 4% interest rate in June or May, for example, and you have to go in and apply today at five and a half plus two percent on a stress test. Mm. Well, your deal just fell apart, right? right. And I'm actually working on one of those right now, and you know it's had me up for a couple of days, not just with COVID, but with the, with that yeah. in itself. Yeah, so it's, that wow. one's been tough, and like those are kind of unique situations a little bit because it's almost a process flow for the broker itself. But, um, you know, in the last two years, it didn't matter because prices were up by the time your application had to go in and the rate was what the rate was. So it didn't yeah. even make a difference. Right. So where we're at, where we're going, like you have kind of a tandem of rates going up, prices coming down. If your price continues to drop and your appraisal value hurts you, well, that can hurt your funding amount. If the rate right. keeps pushing up and you can't qualify based on income, that can hurt your funding amount. There's a lot of pressure on this on every deal right now from every angle. So it's it's a very precarious time. Yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, it's the same thing on this side as well. And I definitely think ma- major communication between real estate agent, mortgage broker, everybody to make sure that we're all on the same page is really important. Um, and one thing I think also is the people that have renewals coming up in the next little while as well um, is something that they're starting to think about and something I wanted to touch upon a little bit. Um, and, and as well as, as the interest rates go up with variable rate mortgages, I think there's a lot of misconceptions out there about how variable rate mortgages work. Um, I've had clients reach out to me when the rates started going up saying, how come my, my payments haven't gone up? Like what's going on? So a lot of people don't actually know 
what kind of a product they have and how it works. So can you talk a little bit about um, variable rate mortgages? Because I think a lot of people have them. And what are the more common types of variable mortgages and, and how do they work? Yeah, I think uh, right now in Canada, we're kind of running at about 30% of mortgages being variable. Um, In 2021, we were trending around 51% of new mortgages being variable. So that's obviously Mm -hmm. a pretty large deviation from what our typical kind of workflow is in that respect, right? Um, it's, It's been a very, very significant factor on kind of household finances today and where we saw the house price run up go to just because of affordability and purchasing power being stretched based on that basis, especially when you look at, you know, Q1, Q2 of 2022, where we started to see the rates already rising, for example, especially on the fixed side. And now you were trending towards a 6% stress test, whereas on variable, you were still able to get in on a 525, for example, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Well, it's three quarters of a percent make a big difference on your qualifying power. Now, right. the different types of variable products out there, I mean, when you're with a traditional A lender, TD, RBC, BMO, CIBC, for example, you're on a fixed uh, payment variable product, right? So what that means is if you're paying $1,000 a month, you know, that's going to split to interest in principal, but it's always going to stay $1,000 per month for the most part, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you're on a a Scotiabank variable rate product, what that actually is, is it's a flexing payment product. So it's called adjustable rate mortgages more so than anything else in the industry. Um, Now, every time the rate goes up, your payment goes up, appropriately based on that basis. So mm-hmm. when the rates went up, let's say back in July at, uh, I think it was July 13th, it went up by one basis point, sorry, yeah. one percentage point. Yeah. Immediately, if you were on Scotia Bank, your payment went up to compensate for that. So if you were at 1% before, now you're paying a 2% interest rate in theory, Got right? Yeah. Um, if you were at uh, TD, RBC, BMO, CIBC, for example, you're ratio was essentially changing. So if you're paying $1,000 a month before, and it was $800 to principal and $200 to interest, well, now it might be 500 and 500. Mm, And then the next time it goes up, it'll continue to swing that way in favor of interest, right? Right. So what that ultimately means for you as a borrower is that come renewal time, you paid off less mortgage, less of your mortgage than you thought you did, right? Right. Come uh, renewal time, you will probably have to either refinance to re-amortize. So mm-hmm. what that means is a full application. They can't just stretch your amortization. It's a new application. Okay. Mm-hmm. So if you have qualifying issues, those become qualifying issues again, right? Cause you have right. to go through that whole process now or continue to make a larger payment, right? There's only one way to balance that. How do you mitigate for these things that are coming up? You can increase your mortgage payment monthly. You mm-hmm. can make a lump sum payment or you can lock into a fixed rate. Now, personally, I still wouldn't lock into a fixed rate in this situation because when you do that, I don't have the math in front of me, but I can get that for you as well, Katie. When you take that lock-in, for example, if you're paying $1,000 a month today, you could end up locking in at $2,000 a month, for example, Mm -hmm. but you're still only paying $500 a month to principal versus... Mm -hmm interest, right? $1,500 yeah. when interest. If you increase your payment, let's say, and you were only paying $200 a month out of that 1000 to uh, principal, it's but you fun. increase yeah. your payment to 2000 now you're paying $1,200 a month to principal versus right. the 500 right? right? So you yeah. got to find that balance and what makes the most sense in that scenario. Right. Um, but yeah, that, there's a lot of different ways to kind of skin this cat, if you will. Yeah, definitely. And also the question about trigger rates is now, I know there's a lot of talk about that. And can you just explain what trigger rates are and what people should be aware of as interest rates continue to go up? Sorry about that. Yeah, no, so okay. trigger rates, um, essentially what happens is once you reach a critical point where you're not paying down your interest anymore, um, that's kind of where the bank is going to start to say, hey, look, Katie, you, you got a situation here. You're not paying down any more of your principal at this point in time. We need to adjust your mortgage payment. Um, the trigger rate is the actual number where you start to lose off on that kind of leverage, if you will. Now, mm-hmm. this di- it differentiates for every single mortgage, every single person out there. So really, you got to talk to your lender to figure out exactly what your trigger rate actually is. Yeah. So if you're, for example, at a 2% interest rate on your variable mortgage, that trigger rate could be 4 let's say, right? right? Where we sit today, we're at 4.3% on most variable products uh, at okay. the A level, right? So at yeah. 4.3%, you've obviously exceeded that 4% trigger rate. Mm-hmm. So now 
what's happening is you're not paying off any int- uh, principal. You're only paying interest. interest. And that's if you log into your online banking for your mortgage and you see that your amortization is stretched to 60, for example, years, as opposed to the 30 that you initially signed up for, that's why. It's, it's like a it's like a credit card statement um, at the end where it says you know it'll take you 150 years to pay off this balance if you only yeah. make minimum payments or whatever crazy right. things like that. <laughs> That's basically what that statement is telling you right there, right? But yeah, if you don't do anything in the next five years, you're setting yourself back, right? Right. You yeah. Have to get in front of that situation. Yeah. So now that's essentially where your trigger rate plays in. The trigger okay. point itself is where you've started to, or where you've gotten to the point where your loan amount has hit either 80% LTV, which was the LTV you originally had or were allowed yeah. to have on a, a not conventional mortgage, right? or 105% on a high ratio mortgage. So when I say high ratio, okay. I'm talking about insured products, right? So right. the 105% in that scenario is 105% of the original loan amount. So if you took a million dollars on the original yeah. loan amount, which is a cap on... Um, high ratio side of things if you took that million dollars and you hit a million uh 50 50 yeah now you hit your trigger point right so now you're at a point where Uh the bank is calling you saying sir madam we need actual money you know like there's a (laughs) conversation to be had here right yeah (laughs) exactly oh man and are you just pushing off there go ahead yeah and how like are you finding that that's starting to happen now have you been hearing that out there for the most part I or not been yet hearing about points being hit but i'm hearing about okay. rates being hit right so got it okay the rate isn't necessarily that hard to hit i mean i, I took a variable True. in march i live to regret it every day because i have these conversations <laughs> every day but i took a variable <laughs> 1.75 at uh oh, like shit. <laughs> the first week of march from rbc it was prime minus 1.25 i think or 1.15 at the time um so now if you think about that prime is 4.7 my discount technically puts me at uh 3.55 as my current interest rate right okay yeah but if you think about the the ratio and all that stuff i'm probably still playing a little bit of principal i don't really care because i'm still in my first six months here mm-hmm. i can ride it out for a bit i can make more yeah. payments I, I have a lot of flexibility on it like I'm, I'm flexible in that sense on um on what i can do there and realistically like it's the first year of a five-year mortgage it should yeah. kind of balance out over the next few four years it, i'm not really too worried but yeah in that respect the average person who's thinking about these things get in front of it absolutely like the, yeah. you have the opportunity raise your payments make Just a lump sum payment yeah. if you can right like i yeah. know a lot of people are stretched right now i see the reports from equifax i see i'm paying attention to what's happening in the economy like it's yeah. tough times, right? And it's yeah. very difficult to start to put that extra money in those places, but do what you got to do at the end of the day, right? Like if you have to yeah. t- start saving from one side of the expense portfolio and put it to this side, then, you know, you kind of have to do that. Otherwise yeah. you're going to put yourself in a very, very precarious situation in two, three, four, five years time when your renewal comes up, right? And exactly. I mean, speaking to the renewal side of the equation, if you were a client that went into a purchase in the last 12 months on, let's say, you know, a little bit of a stretch buy, you went to a B lender that gives you, for example, 50, 55% GDS, TDS, right? Which is kind of like the files that I'm working with right now, where yeah. they're allowing you to have a total debt service ratio of 55%. But that means 55 out of $100 you make per month can go to paying your mortgage, right? Standard okay. banking ratios are 39, 44 for your debt service. So immediately that's 11% higher hmm. um, in that theory, right? So yeah when you factor that in like now you start to factor into the following year where your rate's going from four percent to six seven eight percent hmm. it's double like crazy overnight double how are you going to afford to cover those payments right like it becomes yeah. very very difficult in that future scenario right and all things considered if you got a one or two year term in the last two years you are going to be hiking, uh, sorry, renewing into a higher rate. It's almost yeah. guaranteed. Right. Yeah. So that's the thing. Like if somebody, let's say somebody has another year left in their term, what would you suggest? Do you just like, let's hold off and, and see how things fall over the next year? Um, try to make a lump sum payment if you need to. How would you like guide them on that sort of a thing? If you're at a variable, yeah. Increase your payments or make a lump sum payment. Okay. You know, 
is what it is. If yeah. you're on a fixed term where you had extended ratios being the debt service ratio side of the conversation, yeah. try to reduce the principal as much as you can in this time. Where right? you have a huge rate discount given where we are today versus what you got. Yeah. Any got additional it. dollar that's going in there is going to be done on principal, right? Yeah. We need that principal as low as we can for your next mortgage. Right. In theory. If you have the holding power and staying power in that particular property, then yeah, do everything you can to make sure your next mortgage is lower and we can get it yeah. as low as possible. Start planning for those events today because mm-hmm. it's inevitable. It's going to come sooner or later. It's just a matter of how expensive is it going to be, right? Yeah. If you think you can't, then you need to seriously think about when you're cutting that cord. Right. Because you only have so much rope financially, right? Mm-hmm. You can only do so much with your dollar. You can only earn so much every month. You yeah. need to do what's best for you and what makes the most sense for you. Mm-hmm. And hanging on to a losing asset per se when you can barely hang on is only going to dig the hole further, right? It's yeah. Just, it might take 10 years for this to come back. It might take two years for this to come back. But if it takes two and you hang on, great. If it takes 10 and you think you can You're hang still on, hanging on. <laughs> yeah. Further to turn yourself back, right? Exactly. No, that's such good advice and stuff that I just don't think a lot of people are thinking about right now until they get to that renewal point. And then they're like, oh, crap, we're we're in trouble here. So I think that's really good advice to just prepare and, and uh, try to mitigate the risk as much as possible right now. Right, so just as a wrap up, where are we at right now with variable and fixed rates? Right. So uh, currently the discounts on variable rates are trending around prime minus 0.5% give okay. or take, you know, 25 basis points, depending on the lender. The B lenders are trending into positive. So meaning prime plus, you okay. know, half a percent type of scenario. So yeah. those are things to keep in mind. And typically speaking, all B lender variable products are adjustable rate. So okay. that means every time the rate goes up, your payment goes up as well. So something to keep in mind on your affordability and monthly planning process. Yeah. Um, you are in the market in that type of product class, even variable in general, my suggestion is a one to two year fixed minimum, maybe even three year fixed, just to kind of ride out this next little bit of the hike cycle and give yourself some time to nice. kind of make a, make a decision in the future. Um, yeah. Fixed rates I've been seeing come in between five and 6%, depending on the lender, depending on the program, you know, high ratio, different factors there. But typically yeah. for the most part, five year fixed is coming in at around five and a half percent. Shorter term fixed, I have seen as low as 5.19, so like one year fix. So it's not too bad. There are right. some opportunities there to get in and just kind of carry for a little bit and then reevaluate in a year's time. Yeah. yeah, that's kind of where we're seeing things fall right now. Okay, that's good to know. And it's going to go up <laughs> probably in September. You expect that? Yeah. What is yeah, your projection? Yeah. Yeah, I'm guessing another 75 in September, maybe 50, then 25 after that. Yeah. Um, just the the way the, the U.S. Fed is hawkish right now and everything kind of keeps coming past furious from that side. We don't really have much of a choice. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think PCE, um, another aspect of the uh, inflation side of, con- side of the coin came in hot again today for the U.S. side of things. So that's, again, another push mm. on the inflation conversation and can't really deal with anything else until we deal with that at the end yes. of the day. So it calls for rate drops, um, a little premature in my opinion. I agree. Yeah. We got to ride this out until we start seeing some, some downward trend in the, in the inflation department. So yeah, that's yeah. great. Well, thank you. I appreciate your time. You've, you know, you, you're, you're sick and you're, you got through it. <laughs> um, Thanks so much. But, Katie. Thanks for having yeah. me. And how do people find you if uh, they're looking for more information? Yeah, um, SM underscore CMC on Twitter. Um, if you want to reach out to me, you can call me direct at 647-466-5584, uh, cascademortgagecapital.ca. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Okay, awesome. Thanks for thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Thanks so much, Katie. Have a great day. You too.